a man whose team is currently top seeded in the American Football Conference in his sixth year as head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. Good to chat with Sean McDermott. How are you, coach? I'm great, Rich. How are you guys? I am great. Let's just start off by hitting the way back machine. What was it like being, let me get your, your title correct, assistant to the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in 2001, Sean McDermott? <laughs> what was that like back then? Yeah, that was an experience. Uh I did a lot of things that probably most people did, did you know, wouldn't have wanted to do. Um, I think my my college teammates would kind of give me a hard time saying that you know, I was responsible for all the toilets uh, working properly at the old vet stadium there in Philadelphia. Oh my gosh, that is a, that is uh, uh, when we talk about dirty work, that that would be dirty work. But how did you get how did you get on the radar screen of Andy Reid and the Eagles back in that day you when you're know, starting? Uh, out? Yeah. I, uh, I started uh, in, uh, on the marketing side with the Eagles and, uh, and then worked myself over to the football operations side. And then uh, I got around Coach Reed, and, and he brought me into the, uh, into the coaching side with him there. And then, and then you obviously worked your way up. What, what about that experience, that entire experience, do you bring into your, your experience in Buffalo uh, maybe every day or, or just maybe something that you, you don't even realize but you do? Coach. You know, you know what was unique about it, Rich, was even though there were some jobs that, you know, very, very small jobs, there were some jobs where I had a front row seat um, with Coach Reed, alongside Coach Reed, to do some things that, uh, you know, a lot of people don't get a chance to do, whether it was learn about the salary cap and the, and the collective bargaining, bargaining agreement, um, run training camp. Um, so the whole operation of the business, I got to see from the ground up, and it gives me a lot of appreciation for those currently in our building here in Buffalo that that, uh, that occupy those seats. And and what a seat you occupy right now, uh, Coach McDermott, uh, top seat in the AFC, and then coaching uh, a team quarterbacked by um, Josh Allen, who um, from all um, you know angles appears to be the dream come true that he is when he's playing. So my question for you is, when you see what he looks like now and has become now, how did this get nurtured? What was your plan for him that you now see the seeds that got planted then blossoming now saying, okay, we did, we did that properly? Yeah, I mean, when you draft a quarterback uh, early in the draft, you know, you, you obviously you're drafting a quarterback to eventually become the face of the franchise, if not day one, somewhere down the road. And and we were we were with Josh, and uh, you know I had a front row seat as I mentioned earlier with Coach Reed in Philadelphia and watching us draft Donovan McNabb, and then again in Carolina uh, with Coach Rivera and watching us draft and develop uh, Cam Newton. And so I learned a lot from those situations, and we've, we've handled it similarly here with Josh in terms of his development on the field, off the field. It's a total plan. Uh, not just what takes place on the field, but what takes place off the field is just as important. Well, what would you, can you give me a, for example, something he's doing now that part of your plan back then uh, has allowed him to blossom? Something specific on that? Well, I just think, I mean, when you're talking about, I mean, just the way you handle things uh, specifically off the field with the media, for example, and making sure that he's groomed the right way with media and, and uh, we keep the main thing, the main thing is he, he develops and learns the league, and um, and and so because if you if you don't do your job, you know the the uh, fame of the job will, will go by fast. And then if you if you, go, if you groom yourself the right way and go about it the right way and handle your business the right way, um, that fame will 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 come after you're having great success on the field, which is what Josh has done. I've got Sean McDermott of the Buffalo Bills here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's jump a little bit more into the here and now. Um, what was the meeting with Odell Beckham Jr. like over the weekend, Coach? I, you know, I found it enjoyable. It was a good, solid uh, meeting. That was my first time to, to meet Odell in person. Certainly coached against him for uh, a number of years. Uh, it, was, uh, it was great to meet him. We had a good interaction. I think he enjoyed his time you know, around our building, around uh, a few of our players here as well. And, um, just have a lot of respect for what he's been able to accomplish to this point in his career. Who are some of the players that uh, were available or you made available or you wanted to, to speak to? Anything like that? How did you choose who he got to, to connect with? Yeah, it was more just kind of organically. Um, you know, he, he interacted with a few of our 
our captains, a couple of our veteran players, as you'd expect, and then you know, being around the building and, and just rubbing elbows with uh, just guys that were in the building as well, which was um, which was good to see. And I thought he, I thought I thought it went well. And like I said, um, obviously he he'll have a decision to make at some point here. But um, you know, I think we have a good team, and and, and more than more importantly, I have a good group of uh, of, of players in the locker room. With, with well, I mean, uh, Jerry Jones was on his radio show uh, today. You're on mine, which I'm uh, greatly appreciative of. But he said that he is hesitant to sign somebody who's coming off of a knee surgery and did not work out. Or did did you get him to work out? Did you see him run on the field, Coach? Yeah, no, we didn't do that. We didn't feel like it was uh, it was necessary. We feel like we've got a pretty good feel for for where he is in terms of his rehab. Uh, his rehab process so um, but no we did not do that so then you there is no hesitancy from you to bring him on board based on not not seeing him cut move eye no, test I mean, no, I mean you all there's always uh there's always a little bit of a projection right but you, that's where you put your faith and trust in the doctors and uh and then individually in the player um that you know every everything is uh, all the eyes are dotted all the t's are crossed and um you know he, he's come back from injury injury significant injury before so um you know once we get we get that far um you know i'll I'll put my faith and trust in the medical team and is he is he uh wanting uh more than just a commitment for this year from 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 you in buffalo coach yeah i don't want to get into Okay. All that. I mean, we're just going to take it one step at a time. Here. Okay, then let's talk about the this year. Then I mean, how significant of a contribution do you think he can make? And I understand when you're talking about this, um, you are very happy with the the team you currently have, as well. You should, <laughs> you know. But but how much of a contribution do you think would you expect him to make if he does say, "Let's go to Buffalo," and you say, "Come on in." Yeah, I think again that's that's a conversation for another time. You know, I would start off by saying I'm extremely confident in the team and the players that we do have. Um, so, you know, that's the, the other piece of that is really just a conversation for another time if it gets that far. Sean McDermott, Buffalo Bills head coach here on the Rich Eisen show. Um, when you take on a team for a second time, as you're about to do with the Jets, what, what is the challenge on that front for you? Well, I mean, they 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 play extremely hard. They're physical. Um, you know, I'll start on the, their offense on that on that side of the ball. They've done a great job. Mike White, I think, has done a great job with uh, taking hold of that quarterback job and moving the football. And and, and um, you know, and then you look at the defensive side, and they've been good for. Uh, they've been very consistent this season. They're they're physical up front. They come off the ball. They've got pass rushers, talented on the back end, and and then special teams wise, they've got a really good, re- really really good returner and. And, uh, and and Zerline, their kicker, is, I think he's uh, he's had a heck of a year with uh, a lot of long range field goals. So they've got it going in all three phases, and and um, you know Coach Tyler has done a phenomenal job. So uh, when you look at them on film now, and what Mike White is doing compared to Zach Wilson in the first time you saw him, is, is White presenting a, a bigger challenge for you defensively? I think they're two different players, and uh, you know Zach's obviously very mobile and. and bring some things to the table in that regard and, and then Mike brings some other things to the table um, maybe different different uh, than, than Zach but uh, you know I've been very impressed in the two games that he's played and obviously they put up a ton of yards I think 900 plus yards in two games. Uh, Sean McDermott here on the Rich Eisen show have you referred to Stefan Diggs as him in any way shape or form in any conversation? <laughs> Have you I done love how you, how you bring it back to to reality here for me. <laughs> sure, him. He's uh, him. Uh, yeah, he like yeah. So I, I'll, he refers to himself as him. <laughs> That's like who's on first, right? Yeah, yeah. He does. <laughs> he's him. him. Who are you? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm me. You're you, and he's him. That's. <laughs> I think we got that accurate. I think we, we have. <laughs> but you don't refer to him as him. To him. No, not to him. I think he refers to himself as him. I see. Okay. This is like an Abbott and Costello routine. I, I agree. Uh, but but just watching him, uh, well, hold on, watching Diggs, him, <laughs> perform, uh, can you can you compare it to anybody you've seen? Obviously, you've been on teams with some wide receivers of note who have even made the Hall of Fame. What do you, what, what, what do you say about Diggs and what he's been able to do with your quarterback? What do you got for me uh, there? Yeah, he's been, you know, it's been a joy watching him. 
Diggs in this case. Yes. Uh, come here and uh, and play at a high level, and then yes, just really develop from a leadership standpoint as well. Uh, and when you trade for a player, you never quite know what you're getting. We felt like we knew the player, and now to watch Stefan develop uh, in terms of his leadership and his influence on our team has been been really fascinating to watch. And, um, you know, it's just amazing watching you, Coach. You seem so calm. I mean, you never I, – I, I, is your inner monologue just as calm? Or are you just really good at hiding it? What are you – seriously? I'm, I think – listen, I'm an ex-wrestler, huh. so I think maybe I'm just good at hiding it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, pretty, uh, I'm pretty intense inside it. Okay. So um, what, what do you mean by an ex-wrestler for those who might not have been a wrestler? What is it? So you're, you're screaming inside? You're, are you – you know, I got a little bit of fire. I got a little bit of fire going inside. Uh, yeah. Okay. So between uh, a a wrestler and Ken Dorsey, what is what is happening inside you during a game? Like, where where, where are you closer to? Where are you closer to? Well, what do you what do you know about Ken Dorsey? Well, I saw on the camera, you know, where he kind of rearranged his workspace at the end of a game, which, by the way, I loved. <laughs> I kind of I loved it. I loved it. Um, but you know. Yeah. Do you have that? Is that going on inside you too, Coach? Oh, yeah, I think we've all been there. You know, after a after a challenging day's work, I think we've all been there, at least in our minds, and that just happened to play itself out on national television there. But um, no, we're all competitive. If you're in this business, and I'm sure, um, you know, in any business, if you want to be good at something, you, you got to like to compete and got to have that drive, that internal drive that, that makes you want to be the best. And, again, you've been around a team that's made a Super Bowl, that's for sure. So uh, does this team have that feel for you, Coach? Uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see. We're just going to continue to take it one game at a time. Uh, the next game is the most important game for us, and it's, like I mentioned, a good Jets football team. Sean McDermott, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I I uh, I really enjoy watching your team. I love, I love your quarterback, man. I love talking to him. I love what he does with kids. After the game and before the game, uh, I just think he is—he is all kinds of him in his in his own way, you know. So, um, thanks for thanks for coming on. I greatly appreciate well, it. My pleasure, appreciate it, and uh, you guys have a great rest of your week here. Right back at you. There is Sean McDermott here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free. 